Uh, has kind of come across the weekend. One, you obviously had your uh, non-farm payrolls there on Friday, came in at 151,000, slightly below expectations, not an absolute, absolute disaster, and unemployment dropped as well. So interest rate hikes in the US, not a completely done deal, uh, as in that they're, might, they're very, very likely still to have interest rate hikes in, uh, in 2016. Uh, a few people were thinking if the non-farm payrolls figure came out so bad that it might put interest rates off the table for the entire year, but that's certainly not the case. So we did see the US dollar gain a little bit of extra ground towards the end of the session there on Friday. The thing that a number of commentators are talking about, uh, again, is the price of crude oil and the interesting conundrum that's, that, that's come about. So at the weekend, you had the Bank of International Settlements coming out with uh, a statement along the lines that uh, crude oil, um, the value of crude oil runs the risk of dragging the world economy into a vortex. Uh, and the way how that comes about is that the oil producing countries have a certain amount of debt that they've got to pay back. And what's happening right now, and OPEC always says, oh, why can we not cut production, cut production so we can go ahead and increase the value of oil. The reason why that doesn't really happen, it's not really for market share. What it's down to is the fact that these Gulf, Patrol, uh, Gulf producing states have to sell twice, three times as much oil now than what they had to previously when crude oil was back at like about $90 a barrel just to service their debt. So they can't afford to cut production. In fact, they have to keep on ramping up production to sell even more crude to be able to pay the bills. And what's kind of really happening is, is, is potentially there is this bubble forming for all the storage that's available for crude oil is almost getting completely full now. There will come a point where they keep on producing so much oil that just nobody wants to buy it anymore. And um, if crude oil then can completely tanks, that obviously has ramifications across the wider, the, the wider financial economy because then a lot of these uh, oil producing states that they can't sell oil even at these cheaper prices, they can't service their debt. And it has a kind of a systemic impact across the rest of the world's financial markets. So the thing that a number of traders should be looking at, you should be looking at equities, you should be looking at the macro data, but the real big one is what actually is gonna happen with, with crude oil. Now, with China off on holiday for um, the Chinese New Year, we're not expecting to see a huge amount of volatility first thing, but uh, this is a problem that's not going away. Though crude oil has managed to build a base round about the $30, $29, $28 a barrel. If we start to get below 27, I think that's when things get a little bit more dicey. But that is a big theme that just is not going away anytime soon. So for traders out there, when you're thinking about should I go long or should I go short, keep an eye obviously on that value of crude oil. And the volatility you've seen in the crude oil prices, up 5% one minute, down 5% the next, is testament to how important that commodity is as that barometer of the world economy. And that gives you an overall view as to its importance for the rest of the financial markets. So. That's the fundamental themes. Let's have a look at things from more of a technical perspective, starting off with the US 30 as ever. So, as you can see there, we had a failure to break through 16.460. We actually did rally when, uh, before non-farm payrolls came out, then reverse course towards the end of Friday. Actually reverse course quite late in the session. If I just jump onto my five minute chart, you would be able to get a chance to potentially see that in more detail. So this, this is about at 11 o'clock when we, when we get down to, um, to when non-farm payrolls came out. You can see this initial drop, then a rise, and then a move back to where we are right now. Currently, CMC Marcus clients are currently 68% short. Moving on to the UK 100, 67% long, uh, and that's because we're getting quite close to potential support at 57.68. We're on the wrong side of that 21 period SMA. The other technicals are neutral, apart from the MACD that's almost got a negative crossover. As you can see, the histogram there has gone down, so there seems to be a little bit of short-term negative pressure on the UK 100. Though we are in the middle of two ranges, we're closer to the support than we are at the resistance. Moving on to Japan, 225, 62% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Um, we've seen actually a bit of a rally in Japan, 225, capped by that 21 period uh, SMA. We're on the right side of 68.96 right now, um, though we have been lower there on Friday. We could be looking at the tips of these candles as the next potential support if this one here doesn't uh, remain uh, active. Moving on to dollar yen. 52% of CMC Marcus clients are currently long. This is a very, very volatile one right now. You see the massive spike, then a huge, massive sell-off. 116, undoubtedly, uh, if you look here and here and here as a, as a strategic potential support level to be aware of. The other technicals are relatively neutral apart from the MACD, which is giving a sell signal just now. 
The tips of these candles are indicative of selling pressure as it tries to push on higher. You might see some yen buying if the markets begin to come off, but this is, the, this is dollar strength on the back of the unemployment rate coming down there on Friday. So we talked about crude oil a lot, uh, and as you can see, we, we are potentially capped by this sloping uh, potential uh, trend line. We're on the right side of that 21 period SMA. We're all, we do have resistance, maybe capping for the gains if you're trying to get back up to 35. 2672 is a it's very, very important strategic level. you would be looking at the tip of this candle here around about 2871 as the next potential level. Crude oil is gonna be so important in the next couple of weeks and months. Moving on to uh, gold, gold's has been going crazy. So 1191 is the next potential uh, resistance. So if interest rates are still happening in 2016, if non-farms really wasn't that bad because the unemployment rate is so low, why is gold just catapulted up? Now it has come off a little bit today and we are trading at the bottom of the range. 63% of CMC Marks clients are currently long and we're miles away from the nearest support, which is all the way back down at 1131. But um, I guess the fundamental fact is behind gold, you do have the safe haven aspect, it is interest rate sensitive. If they are gonna raise rates, it's probably not gonna be toward, till, towards the end of the year anyway. So maybe part of this strength is the fact they're just not gonna raise rates the first half of 2016. Uh, but 1191 is the next potential resistance level. But expect lots of volatility as ever. Moving on to Euro dollars, 74% of CNC markets clients are currently short. Massive technical breakout there last week when we broke out the symmetrical tri triangle formation. One spot 11 is the potential support. The tips of these candles would be the next potential resistance. In fact, I have to go on here, and I think you probably have to start taking these points here. So we're in about one spot 15 will be the next potential support. We're miles away from there right now, but one spot 1110, uh, or one spot 1105, sorry, is a level you wanna watch out for as a potential support. If we do retrace back down, this level here could be kind of interesting. And then if we finish up with GBP USD, um, not a huge amount happening. Uh, we did have this big massive rally last week. It's kind of stumbled. We're on the wrong side of one spot 45, 65 right now. If we do retrace up to here, this could be a strategic pivot. So those of you that think that uh, the rally is over, people could go short here or target here. If we break through one spot 45, you could go long here and target here as a potential, as a typical technical analysis breakout strategy, that's what you can look at. Same two clients are currently 80% long, so they're obviously hoping for, uh, for that move to the upside. But we are on the wrong side of potential resistance right now, but the technicals are relatively neutral. We have a look at my market calendar for a quick second. So what kind of uh, market data do? There's a big absence of anything of significance today. Uh, fast forward on tomorrow, industrial production from Germany. And then Wednesday, uh, you've got some Chinese uh, data, broad money M2 and money lending, new yuan loans. Uh, manufacturing output and the petroleum updates from the US as well. Well guys, that's it from me. Uh, very good luck with your trading and uh, please join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.